I must admit, I haven't used the rigging and skinning features much, but I know a man who has. Phil Stewart from Blue Zoo Animation Studio is our featured guest for this workshop. You're head of real time at Blue Zoo Animation Studio in London. Before we get into your workflow and masterpiece, please would you tell us a little bit about Blue Zoo? What sort of content does the studio create and uh, what does your role involve? Uh, so Blue Zoo are a studio based in north of Soho. Um, most of what we do is uh, children's television, preschool television, uh, but there's also uh, a department that work on commercials, short form, um, adverts, that kind of thing. Um, my role in particular is an R&D role. So I, as you said, I head up the real time department. At the moment, that's been mainly looking into technologies like uh, Unreal Engine, uh, how that can come into our pipeline, uh, using Blender, EV, uh, real-time renderers, and then real-time animation. So at the moment, we're, we're developing some new uh, puppeteering tools that use VR. Um, so we're sort of uh, trying to experiment with emerging technology, see how they can benefit us as a company and how they can improve and fit into our workflow in ways that will benefit all of our artists. I know recently you've been experimenting with Masterpiece Studios toolset in your sort of internal R&D process. Where in your pipeline is it bringing value? I'm quite independent in, in that a lot of the work that uh, the real-time department do, we're sort of set off on a, on a mission to find out how to do something, uh, if something will work particularly well. Um, and Masterpiece means that I don't have to uh, involve other departments as much. So I'm able to rig up a character, skin a character in Masterpiece, get that into Unreal and then drop that onto a onto a rig or into our puppeteering system. And it means that I'm able to keep all of that work contained. So I'm not a professional rigger, but uh, using Masterpiece gives me the ability to to get that kind of process done and quicker than I could ever do it in something like Maya or Blender. So I can rig a character now inside of Masterpiece in depending on the complexity of the character, any time between five minutes and an hour and a half, sort of be able to get something, at least something workable into Unreal so I can start testing uh, how our puppeteering tools work with those new assets. You've clocked many years in the computer animation industry as a technical director, lighting and rendering artist, and you know CG designer across films, TV and commercials. Basically, what I'm trying to say is you're no slouch when it comes to industry tools and workflows. So. The fact that you're experimenting with Masterpiece Studio, even in this early stage of the software sort of life, does that suggest that in your assessment, VR tools have a lot of potential, even if they're not fully um, production worthy yet as, a, as someone who's looking at R&D, do you think they're a viable option for, for studios and content creators? Absolutely. Um, so large parts of our workflow are moving towards uh, real time and VR in particular. So. Being able to, I think I alluded to a few moments ago, we're developing our own puppeteering system. So that helps us develop animation uh, really quickly. So uh, that's based inside of Unreal Engine, but it means that using a VR setup, you can grab a character and animate that. And we can animate a 30 second clip in five or six minutes um, because it's just so quick and intuitive. Also being able to create assets. So modeling tools, texture painting, um, and then yeah, rigging, as you said, all of these uh, additional ways of inserting VR into our workflow is just speeding everything up, making it uh, possible for someone like me who, as you said, I've worked in a few different departments, but not necessarily so accomplished at the actual asset creation. Being able to use VR tools for that means that I can start to work as quick as a professional would be able to because yeah. I'm not having to deal with the fact that everything is flat. Um, obviously, I'm very familiar with 3D software, but even so, rigging or, or texture painting on in flat is something I'm still not particularly uh, well versed in. Whereas in VR, it's so intuitive being able to move around, being able to reach around the, the character and see from different angles as you're, as you're producing these different um, stages of the, of the workflow. It, ma it makes it very a lot faster for us. And I mean, it's looking more and more likely that we'll have uh, the opportunity to work in virtual offices and that kind of thing. I mean, as of the last few years, I've been working from home, um, being able to essentially sit down in a room with one of my co-workers if we're both in VR and, and have those conversations face to face and be able to pull up work. It's something that we'll be doing more and more regularly in the future, I think. Uh, I couldn't agree more. Um, so let's uh, let's take a look at some of that um, some of that work you've been doing in uh, Masterpiece. Tell us a little bit about this use case you've been um, exploring. 
So for this is one of the tests we're doing internally at the moment. Um, so what we've been wanting to do is experiment with uh, uh, a, a fuzzy, a furry character. So hair and fur in Unreal Engine. Um, we also wanted to test out our puppeteering system with something a bit more complex than we've been working with so far. So so far it's been bipeds. In this case, I hope no one's at acrobic, but um, it's a, it's a giant spider, um, which is actually, yeah, well, in this view, it's a giant spider. It's actually a peacock spider, which is only the size of your fingernail. Um, but they they perform these mating dances, and so that was the idea for this test. Um, one of our one of our asset, uh, one of our character um, artists created the model. Um, we've had our groom artist working on uh, putting the groom together, and then I said I can I can break this in in masterpiece because I've been using it quite a lot and. A, a spider is something which is relatively um, simple, I think, for someone like me. There's uh, a lot of the joints are uh, clearly defined, aren't they? Clearly defined, exactly. Yes, there's not a whole lot of, of, of blending going on. It's quite clear joints, um, and yes, yeah, so you can see I'm, I'm doing this in masterpiece. So the things like the mandibles, um, I've got a bone chain in there, and I'm using the skinning tools to blend the weight. So masterpiece can absolutely do that, but I've been finding that it's uh, even easier for me to be able to get in close there and and do these highly articulated joints. Um, right. So that the color, the colors that you see there, I see you're clicking on a bone and then. You're painting, I think it's called weight painting, right? That's right, yeah. Um, so for each bone, um, what I'm doing is I'm assigning the, the weight of the vertexes that are affected by that bone. So the red uh, vertexes are being affected 100% by the bone that is selected at the time and then that cools off down to blue and eventually white when something is when it's not being affected by the bone at all and by blending those uh, those weightings those skin weights and those colors uh, what you can get is you can get the, the gradual um, fall off from a bone's influence over a particular vertex or a set of vertexes so you can see that's what i'm doing in here i'm, I'm getting close into the model as i said it's really easy for someone like me to be able to make that uh, asset enormous and get right inside and actually get down to the level of painting individual verts i can change the size of the influence tool that i'm using so that's the little blue sphere on the end of my on the end of my controller there um, that I can make that larger or smaller depending on what kind of uh, fidelity I need for the work. If I'm going in and painting single verts, I can make that sphere nice and small. And if I'm doing large work, what I can do is change the fall off as well. So you can paint a large number of vertexes and the inner sphere is going to be uh, affecting it. I think I've got it set to 100% strength here. So anything on in the inside, the inner sphere is going to be getting 100% affected. And then that's going to fall off to essentially zero at the outside of the sphere. So you can get that gentle painting. Now you can yeah. see there as well, what I was doing was uh, just grabbing those bones and just moving them around, um, making sure that my weighting is correct in the uh, uh, against these bones that I've got. Make sure there's no vertexes that have got accidentally um, uh, weighted to the wrong bone or uh, anything that's got uh, too much of a, a heavy fall off. So the the blends aren't um, aren't clean enough for the spider in particular. Um, yeah, yeah, because the the spider has the sort of at least this spider, the design of this spider has um, very clear joints where you know one ends and the other one begins. So having a pretty um, solid with a gentle fall off, I guess, uh, works to your advantage here. Now, I guess the same process, like for example, there, you can see it's a very subtle shift in weight because uh, they're all sort of, uh, it's a softer part of the animal. But if you were, say, rigging a robot, could you follow the same process? Would everything essentially be in red, every sort of bone and, and weight? Yeah, so actually um, a couple of days ago I was using Masterpiece to rig uh, a character which is going to be essentially like a wooden puppet um, and that the process for that is exactly like you described. Um, so every single, it's a relatively simple um, underlying bone structure. I think there's maybe only seven or eight bones in total um, but and each of those has a completely separate body part. So the leg is 100% weighted to one of those bones because we don't need any deformations there. The the uh, actual asset is, um, is meant to look like a wooden puppet and that doesn't uh it doesn't have these blends so that's a, a really good use case of how you can weight something 100 percent to a particular bone right and if uh if someone wanted to um, explore this for the first time you know starting out what would you recommend uh they do would, 
you know, the, the spider, you mentioned it's a simple um, use case, but it might be a bit overwhelming with the number of joints for someone new to using any rigging software, even even Masterpiece, which makes things um, a lot you know, easier and more accessible. Would you suggest they start with a rigid body puppet sort of mesh, like the one you described, the wooden puppet, or how would you, um, how would you ease into this workflow? I'd say actually, um, if you're going to go in and, and do something which is more rigid body, then you're probably not getting the full benefit of uh, of the skinning here. The the ability to blend really easily is something that I really like about Masterpiece, and it's one of the reasons why it's become my preferred way of of, of skinning rather than doing it in say Maya, where uh, weight painting is quite a, a, a bit more of an ordeal for someone like me. Um, so I would say pick something which is challenging if you're going to be using it for the first time because that's how you learn the limitations, it's how you learn what the tools can do and it's much better to figure out uh, what those tools are capable of doing as early as possible because then you know how to use them better in the future. So, I mean, the spider was a challenge for me as well. Um, I haven't done the thing with eight links before and actually dropping this into Unreal and then trying to set up IK rigs for something with eight legs and three bones in each leg was a, a real um, a real challenge. Uh, it took quite a long time uh, once I'd done this, this initial process uh, to get it all working, but it's all going now, so that's okay. Uh, that's a really good tip, by the way, to start with what you actually want to do, rather than sort of, uh, an, you know, an isolated sort of example. Start with a, a specific objective, and then you understand the limits of the tools. I've noticed you don't have mirroring turned on. You're doing each uh, side. I don't know what you call. What do you call this part of the spider? Is it like a fang or something? Uh, yeah, I think they're yeah, they're fangs. I'd say. Right, and it seems like you're doing them separately rather than uh, mirroring the skinning. Was there a reason for that? Uh, no particular reason. I mean, I think it gives a bit more of an organic feel to the characters, but um, actually in this case, it was just, it's such a quick process that I didn't really need to uh, rely on the mirroring. Setting up the mirroring can be um, quite difficult if you've got a character like this that comes in um, in a non-uniform way. So actually this character wasn't quite symmetrical when I brought it in. Um, so setting up mirroring might not be as successful for that. But yeah, in this particular case, it was purely because I was um, just able to able to do it quite quickly, so it didn't matter. Sure. Now we're looking at your skinning process here. When the asset came in, when the spider came in, was it just the geometry, or was it with the bones as well? And you're, you're essentially attaching the the skinning to, to bones, or did you draw the bones in masterpiece as well? I, I drew the bones in masterpiece. So yeah, this was a, essentially a static asset when it came in, um, it just as an FBX, and then I drew the skeleton and did all the skinning um, inside of masterpiece as well. Yeah, that's cool. How long did it take you to draw the bones in Masterpiece? Oh, I mean, drawing the bones is probably about five or six minutes. Um, it, it may have taken me a few times to go through it because uh, I find the first time that I put all the bones in, uh, you realize maybe, maybe after you've done it once that uh, some of the bones are uh, misplaced or say, for, for example, the fangs or the mandibles. Um, I, I think I initially had two bones in there and I realized after my initial run through that I'd need close to three or four bones to get the actual right. smooth bend, uh, blending that I wanted. The mm -hmm. Unreal in particular has some nice bone chain um, ways of working so you can set up a rig so uh, each each bone along the chain the influence drops off so that's something that we use I use quite a lot so that, that's an example of uh, yeah, when I realized I needed to go back and redo the skeleton uh, generally it's, it's quite easy to, to draw those skeletons out um, I've, I find that making sure that everything is connected properly is is really easy within Masterpiece. Um, the only problems I do have sometimes are that the bone transforms come in, uh, so when I export, it comes in with uh, different bone transforms, but I know that the devs are looking to set ways of zeroing out the transforms uh, at the moment, so that should be something that gets fixed. Yeah, right. In fact, that was one of my next questions. So it's all good and well working in the app and, you know, it, the benefit of working in VR is you can reach right into the geometry and draw the bones. So it takes out a lot of that guesswork you, norm you would normally have to do via a 2D screen, you know, the, the Z depth and all that sort of stuff. So that's all great, but it, this is only great if it exports reliably to um, 
your production environment. And it sounds like if you're using Unreal, there are a few quirks that you have to sort of um, get around. Is that right? The, the export process isn't totally smooth yet. Um, well, the actual export process is, um, it's bring it into Unreal, I find that because, I mean, it's the nature of what I'm doing in Unreal is not typical. Um, if you're just using it as a, as a skeletal mesh, um, it'll be absolutely fine. The, the problem arises in my particular use case because I'm developing this puppeteering system and within, within that, what I'm doing is directly setting um, bone transforms. So I'm quite literally taking over the skeleton and then using a control cube or a different asset, I'm setting those values. So if a bone comes in with an arbitrary value already applied to it, and I then override that value, instead of the bone moving the predicted distance, it resets it to zero and then moves at the predicted distance. So it is a very niche case. Um, and it, I don't think that would apply to, to everyone. So it's safe to say you've inspired me to get outside my comfort zone of just sculpting and, and uh, getting into rigging and skinning in the app too. Thanks so much for those. If, um, if, we, uh, if we wanted to check out more of your work, where would we, uh, where would we find you? Oh, uh, I mean, the Bluesy website is the best place to go for that kind of thing. Um, the real-time department in particular don't have much forward-facing, uh, like audience-facing work because we're an internal R&D um, department, but you'll start to see stuff coming out relatively soon, I think, from Bluesy using the tools that we've been developing. So if you're interested in VR workflows and that kind of thing, keep an eye on what Bluesy are doing. Um, yeah, we're always looking to uh, use the best tools for any particular job. And so if something like Masterpiece comes along and it um, looks like that's the best thing to do, to use, we'll start using it. Fantastic. Thanks so much for your time, Phil. No problem.